My church started a program of discipleship where they take a select mature Christians in the church and teach them this um, discipleship program and after they've completed it then they choose a person uh, or the person asked to be chosen like I did to, to do this program with that discipler and um, it's called Daily in the Word A Biblical Journey in Personal Discipleship it's by John Honeycutt and um, it's by uh, striving together uh, publications everything that they do is only in the King James Version which is extremely unusual in this day and age um, uh, the, the church that it comes from is uh, Lancaster Baptist Church that's a pastor and um, Part of, part of what I do in, in this program is uh, it teaches you to meet on a regular basis with a person to be discipled so that you learn Bible doctrines and are assured of what you know um, through correct learning and teaching. It's to help you mature and to grow. Um, lesson one's on salvation, of course, and it goes over creation. Uh, the triune God, where evil came from, the first man and woman, sin and love and the grace of God, the promise of a Savior, the Savior revealed, the Ten Commandments, the claim of the Savior, good works and salvation, how to receive salvation and commitment to salvation. Then lesson two is assurance. Lesson three is on prayer. Lesson four is on uh, the local church and what the Bible teaches about that. Lesson uh, five is on discipleship. And then with lesson five, you start doing uh, what they call discipleship training modules. Lesson six, the future, which is uh, our spiritual warfare, the rapture, tribulation, the millennium. Uh, lesson seven is uh, spiritual f formation. It talks about our, cult cult our culture today, importance of holiness, principles of principles of purity. Uh, lesson eight is faith. Lesson nine is conversation. Um, problem solving with Christians, understanding false teachers, how to answer non-Christian beliefs. It's, it teaches you how to witness. Lesson ten is uh, about loving God. And it's very colorful. The, the only downside, and I, I don't notice this in my house because I don't have light shining on the, on the uh, paper, but is it's glossy, and I would rather they have done a matte finish because if, if you've got a light uh, shining on the paper, it makes it really hard to read. And uh, you, what you do is you go through your disciple, or, and you do it together. You do not do it ahead of time, and you, fi and you go over the verses, and you fill out uh, the blanks, and um, let's see, and then there's always a reflect and transfer. Here I've wrote a verse out, and then each section has questions that that I will. I don't think that's the questions though, because they don't have question marks after them. Um, has questions. Where are they at? There's an online resource for additional materials. Uh, here they are. Assignments for Lesson 1. And I, I do these questions. So along with this book, I have to have a three ring notebook. And what I did was I scanned the uh, front of the page to, to make a cover. And they tell you what sections to have in your notebook. And you have a section called Daily in the Word. And one of the assignments that I do is, the first one is to write out uh, the Gospel of First John through Second John. 
and I could have wrote on the back of the paper I just chose not to and you do it a certain way whenever there you know there's a, a comma then you then you write on another line so you break up the verses according to punctuation <clears throat> which takes up more paper but it really helps you uh, it slows you down so you really cover what you've what you're writing and the second part and this took quite a while was to write out the gospel of mark and i just finished that last night and um let me flip over I've got so much paper open in my hand here That's... and each time you finish writing a section then you write the date that you finished and I finished this last night and the reason why that we we write out the scripture is um, it was actually commanded by God that the kings of Israel write out their own handwritten uh, copy of the books of the law which is the is the first five books of the Bible and um, I've done my online devotions of Word of Life for I think this is going on three years now and um, I'm just looking to do something new in my devotions so I have started to write out a cop my own copy of the Bible and um, when I write the verses I write it like like I have been taught here is if there's a punctuation then I, I start another line and I'm writing it in ink, so I make mistakes, I need white out. And I am writing on both sides of the paper, so I'm not using as much paper, but I do skip two lines between the verses, so if I, when I go back to use this as my Bible, I've got areas to write in notes. And um, I've done I think, gotta go look up here. I'm on chapter, seventeen. Okay, yeah, chapter seventeen of Genesis. So, um, I bought college ruled paper, so hopefully I'm getting more on it more writing on each sheet. I, for one thing I could write smaller but uh, my eyesight is getting worse and worse with each passing, passing year so I'm just writing with my normal size hand print. But I, I recommend this um, program of discipleship for anybody that, that want, needs something, uh, a program in the church to help uh, people to to really get into the Bible and think about their relationship with God and you know not to get into a rut where all they're doing at church is they're coming they're sitting in the pew they might be going to the activities or singing in the choir or uh, helping out with different committees like I'm I, I help on um, I can't remember the name of the committee one thing I help with the stained glass cafe and um, I think I help with I think I might be on the flower committee again I don't even remember which committees I'm on I just help wherever I need I need to get to help but we can get so busy in filling our lives up with various tasks that we forget to pray and we forget to read God's Word and just spend time with God and the most important of course of anything that we can do in our lives is prayer and I find that to be really really hard because it's, it's so humbling to pray when you pray and you, you talk to God and you're you think about how holy and perfect he is it reminds you of Well, at least it, rem it reminds me of all the things that I'm lacking, and it it 
it encourages me to work on my character to be more Christ-like especially to keep the first and great commandment which is to love God and if you love God and you have love in your heart then your life is on track but the fact is we are not very good at at that emo well it's not emotion it's it's a it's a commitment to doing to listening to authority and to obey that authority and to follow and um, emulate the example of that authority and it's not just uh, feeling warm and, and appreciative of something you know love is, is an emotion and it's not the warm and fuzzies it's it's what you do and it, uh, it the Bible says God is love and I it's just this really keeps you focused on that relationship and um, in fact I'm uh, let's see let's see daily in the word reading writing saying the gospel of Mark um, part of what I'm uh, do is um, this is a list of I think it's 24 verses that I that I, mem I have to memorize and um, I'm working on that and as you see there's there's signatures that's when my discipler signs that I've c completed something and what I've completed here was I think just to write them out and I, I wrote them on index cards but um oh it's hard to turn pages and hold a camera at the same time this is where I've I'm, I need to, this is where I finish, and today I'll be meeting with her, and we'll be going over the judgment seat in lesson six, but I, I did look ahead a few pages, and this is what I'm talking about, is these questions that really focus you on your relationship with God. How are you doing in reading the Word of God daily? And I, I love reading God's Word, and it's much easier to me than anything that I can do in my relationship. Um, but even that, sometimes I'm just like, oh, I don't feel like it. And then, how are you doing in memorizing the Word of God? And I used to do it every single day for hours, spend memorizing Scripture. And then I got discouraged, and I quit. And now when I go back and I try and uh, quote any of those, I, I memorized over 150 verses. I can't, I can't say them anymore. You know, it's, I've forgotten them. So that's discouraging. So I'm, I'm really uh, not doing what I should in, in memorizing. How are you doing in your daily prayer time? I already said how hard that was, how humbling it is. And when you start thinking of the needs of others and, and, uh, there's people are have so many needs and and it it, it breaks my heart um, when I think about those that are sick and those that need a job and those that I love deeply who are dying and going to hell. Um, I think about their need for salvation, and it's it just it's really hard to to pray because it it makes me cry and tears me up. So I kind of I'm not good at that, but. It, it says, how are you doing in your daily prayer time? Am I struggling? Well, yes. Does it need improvement? Definitely. Am I growing? I don't think so. And I don't think I'm doing well. I know I'm not doing well. I'm constantly being convicted of my prayer life. And I don't think that will ever stop. Um, that conviction will always be there because God says to pray constantly without ceasing. Are you faithful meeting with your disciple? Or yes. Have you been biblically baptized in immersion? Yes. Are you faithful to attend and give to your local church? I'm faithful in giving. Well, I'm faithful in attending, and I do give to my church. And I'm, again, humbled by Tim, who does not profess to believe Christ as his Savior. 
who is so generous and gives gives me money all the time, a set amount every week with such faithfulness. It's it's very humbling because when I prayed uh, yesterday about what would I would increase for my the MIF mission conference, and I said, you know, I struggled with that. I said, should I increase? my amount in giving to mission conference or should I work more on increasing what I give to my church because I don't I don't even give 10 percent and um, my church teaches that 10 percent is the minimum and uh, that it, it belongs to God just you know um, that's the minimum amount it, but I don't know. I've been I've been brought up that that the tithe is uh, storehouse tithing is not really biblical. That God says He owns everything, and um, I don't know, I'm conflicted about that. I can see the point that giving 10 percent uh, is just a lesson that God gives us a task to help us to have faith and to trust Him that it'll be all right if we give 10 percent that we will never uh, while giving our tithe um, not have our, our needs met and um, another question how are you sharing the gospel with others and um, I, I have my own personal encourager she calls me up and she says, Miss Linda, are you going to go soul winning today? And uh, she reminds me and the fact that she wants to go uh, and I'm her ride gets me out wherein now that she's uh, got, uh, I think, six more weeks of soccer games, unfortunately on Thursday, you know, I've not been as, I've not been going. And a lot of times we're the only two people that show up. Here is this little girl who, who, you know, almost drags me to soul winning and keeps me faithful. And uh, if I go without her, I won't even have a partner and I won't be able to go. I'll have to go home. And a lot of times we're the only two people that show up. And again, that's humbling her. I'm so thankful for her and her friendship and her relationship and her and her zeal for God and and going out. Um, and the last one is, what is your commitment level to one-on-one -on -one discipleship? And uh, I I think it need I think it I I I don't know I don't I wouldn't say I'm struggling but I know that I can improve upon it. Um, I don't work on my memory verses as often as I can. I mean, I've memorized them to where I can go through and quote them uh, pretty well. But I have to continuously work on them because I'll forget them. And um, so I have to, I have to do it, you know, I should do it every day or at least two, three times a week and I, I, I just don't do it. And so I need improvement. So uh, I know this is a long video. But I do recommend this discipleship program and um, how it will just uh, encourage you and push you. And it's not for the faint-hearted. It's, it's work. And it takes a great commitment of time um, to meet once a week. Or even, you know, some people might even want to go a little faster. And they have the time to meet more than once a week for an hour or an hour and a half a week. Each each time they meet, and uh, it's a t it, it's one thing. It is it's for my the person who's discipling me is she's given me her time, and um, and it, it's just precious. And uh, I I talk too much about it, but I encourage people to do this, and uh, that's all.